I've decided not to cut this yet. I'm going to show you how I get a straight line here. I'm going to measure this again, and I got 39 and 5 eighths, or just shy of that. I guess I better move my ladder. Whenever you can move your ladder instead of reaching too far one way or another, it's best to do that. Okay, so I'm going to hold that up there. and get myself a mark at least as far as I think it needs to go right there. And I've got a sheetrock nail and I'm just going to put it on the mark or hold it just beyond it, eyeballing it, going straight. Just like that. And I've got a chalk line. You can buy these at the hardware store, and usually they come with blue um, chalk. You can get you can get red too. Sometimes they mix red and blue together. I don't like doing that. Then it makes purple. And purple, it's kind of hard to get off if you go too far. Okay, so I got that held up there. That's my little helper today. I don't want to. Ooh. Oh. I get it. I'm gonna have to start over because I want that up tight. Right? You can't get it. No, no, no it's fine. I'll get it. it. I'll get it. See, when you're when you're doing stuff by yourself, you gotta you gotta figure out doing things like this. If you got a helper, yeah, they can hold one side and you can do the other. Now I can maybe leave my ladder right there, maybe. Okay? I want to look at this. I don't want to push the pull the tape, pull the chalk line too far over. The tape is gonna is gonna cover it anyways, but Okay, so I hold it tight and I just do that. There it is. Okay, there's my straight edge. I know you can cut that out with your little, your little sheetrock saw. Just you know, a little bit at a time. That's all you got to do. Just keep in mind of all all these different steps. You'll forget some of the steps, but you just kind of play this back a little bit. And the more you do, just the better you'll get. That's just how it works. Now, I don't have a line here, but if you just cut your, use your saw, you can usually feel the edge of your joist. Or if you have, if you have a question about that, you can cut it short of the joist if you want. You know, over to your line. Then you can finish up this once you take out the other piece, okay? So that's what we'll do here. Little strokes, not hard, just go nice and easy. And does your saw have to be sharp? No, you can use, I've got one uh, that's probably 15 years old. It feels dull, but it cuts sheetrock just fine. Okay, now you can poke this in and we'll continue it over to the joist here. Turn it around and start this way. Try not to cut right underneath this, so you always want to be aware of that. Move your ladder. Get up in there, use two hands. And just start sawing. Nice little easy strokes. Let the saw do the work. Now, because I don't want to make too much of a mess, could I take this off right now? Yeah, I probably could. I think I'll, I'll cut it a little bit further and I can pull this off in one piece, trying to be careful. I don't want to be rambunctious. I mean, there's, there's a time to rip and tear. There's a time to be careful. You've got to know that for yourself. Now, I'm right up against this joist. Now, how am I going to cut through that? You just move it over, poke your saw, flip it around and go back. Now you can do your saw at an angle. There you go. Go that way, whatever. That should be good enough. Okay? And keep her moving. Now I can take my hammer and whack, 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 but because I'm trying to be careful, 
just going to use it and put it on the side like that. Use this as a wedge on the joist. Just loosen a little bit like that. Okay, come over to here. Hang on to it because I don't want this to drop and swish dust all over the place, okay? That's, that's what I'm trying to do here is to be kind of careful, okay? There. Keep this upside down until I get to the ground. Put it down that way. And incidentally, when you get when you get a good patch out, and if you don't have any water stain on it, you might want to save a piece of this because if you don't have the right paint for your ceiling, you can cut this piece off. In fact, I'm going to cut this piece off right here. Gonna score this a couple times, flip it over, bend it up, score the back. Now that piece looks pretty clean. I might I might take a look and I might use another one. Last thing you want to do is get a piece of your patch that's too dirty because when you go to the, the paint store, they're gonna match up whatever color this is. So if, if you got a little bit that's off color, they're gonna match an off color, okay? So you want something nice and clean. In fact, this piece here, this might be a little bit cleaner than this, or if this is the cleanest you have, wash this a little bit, maybe spray some cleaner on there lightly. You don't want to rub too hard because you might take some of the finish off, okay? So just be aware of that before you throw all your patches away. You see, if you got a question on whether or not you feel comfortable cutting right up tight like that, because it might be too hard. Just cut it here. I've got that. Now I can kind of see where my blade is. If that makes it easier for you, then by all means. a little bit that's fine you can you can come back now and clean it up now do you see that can you see that yeah miss camera woman this is a copper water line had you have cut this with the sawzall lots of times your sawzall blade is at least this long if not a hair longer you think oh there's nothing in my way I'll just cut that off and zip 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 and all of a sudden you got some water leaking on you and now you've made a big huge mess because you thought you knew what you were doing, you didn't want to check things out, you didn't want to be safe and now you got a water issue, you got to turn the water off, you got to patch that, you got to find out where the water main is to the house and all that and now you just wanted to patch this ceiling, oh yeah, you just wanted to patch all right. <laughs> Here's another tip for you. When you're walking around and crawling around up in an attic, if your insulation is up too high, if you're blowing insulation around there, and you think, oh, I know where the joists are, I can walk there and, and stuff, you've got to be careful of things like this that protrude in your way. Last thing you want is to put your foot on there halfway and half off or kneel down wrong or something, and then all of a sudden you bend one of those pipes if it's flexible uh, piping like this is, okay? So be careful when you're up there in the attic. This is what I'm going to use. I usually carry one of these around in my nail bag. This is called a cat's paw. And it's a nail puller. And sometimes you can get one on this end and one on the other end. Those are kind of good in case you get a long area to hook it. Well, I don't have that, but I only have this. But this is going to work in a pinch whenever you need it.